Through Glass by Stone Sour, aka Corey M. F. Taylor, is by far one of his most hypocritical songs he's ever written. Let's read through the background of the song in the first place. The song was originally inspired by frontman Corey Taylor's outrage at the music industry and how he felt that the musical revolution had never taken place. Okay, so big boy Corey Taylor is mad at the music industry, the thing that made him famous in the first place. Okay, let me get this straight. He's mad that there's no musical revolution. My brother in Christ, in the early 2000s, we had Linkin Park, System of a Down, Korn, Deftones, Papa Roach, The Strokes, and so many other more things. That's literally one of the most biggest music revolutions, you know, when people still bought CDs. It was a time where Evanescence album Fallen can sell 17 million albums worldwide, and Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory 32 million albums worldwide. So the early 2000s, I don't know what you were doing, but it was a pretty big deal. Even till this day, 20 years later, people are still like obsessed with it. And you know, with the whole pop-punk revival thing that's going on a few years ago. So yeah, I guess the fame blinded him at that point, because he really didn't notice or appreciate what was actually going on at that time. And let's not mention in 2004, he was only 31 years old. In 1991, when he was 18 years old, guess what happened? Metallica's Black Album, Nirvana's Nevermind. Few years after that, what do we have? The Offspring, Green Day. So my man's been privileged enough to live through all of these musical revolutions and still complain that there's no musical revolution. Like bro, it's only been 4 years since 2000. What are you expecting? I feel like he was impatient, waiting for the next big thing to just appear out of nowhere and make it happen. Maybe his own career was dying or something, I don't know. And maybe he was hoping a new genre would emerge and he'll just hop on a bandwagon and become successful again. Because I'm sure at that point from 2000 to 2004, new metal was getting kind of boring. Anyway, here's a quote from Corey Taylor himself. I remember exactly where I was. It was 2004 and I was on tour with Slipknot. I was sitting in a European hotel room watching a music video channel, seeing act after act of this insane, innocuous plastic music. They were plastic, bubbly, gossamer thin groups where it was really more about the clothes they wore and the length of their cheekbones than it was about the content of the song they were singing. It really made me mad. I was like, is this it? Have we gone full circle? Did the singer-songwriter revolution never happen? Is it just the same drivel from the same replicate over and over again? Through Glass is really a very angry song. It's me basically calling bullshit on pretty much everyone involved with the American Idol type shows. It has its place, but when you're basically cornering the market and making it very hard for anyone who actually writes their own music to get heard, then it's wrong and that's really why I wrote this song. So basically, he was watching MTV, a lot of pop music showed up that looked the same, and then he had this opinion. It's funny how he's complaining about the clothes they wore, where their whole gimmick was wearing jumpsuits and wearing masks. Let's be real, if Slipknot didn't wear masks, then no one would even care. Of course the looks play a part in it. So he's whining about the singer-songwriter revolution. It's such a weird and random thing to think about. I also at some point thought that a lot of music sounds the same, but I never thought like, Huh? Didn't the singer-songwriter revolution never happen? So he said Through Glass is a really angry song, but it's a ballad, you know? And he's blaming American Idol for, what, doing its own thing? Maybe he's afraid these pop stars are gonna overthrow metal. American Idol wasn't trying to stop people from making music, they're just doing their own thing, you know? Isn't it more productive to actually attack attack the music business, the industry, and the gatekeepers, and those record execs, you know? But I can see why he wants to target American Idol. Metalheads, they just want to rebel against something, you know? Rebel against the man. And at that point, American Idol was big, that seems like an easy target, so yeah. But in reality, they didn't really gatekeep anything. Yeah, I'm sure you hate it if every year the top 5 songs are from American Idol winners. But he's seriously blaming the wrong thing. So, Corey MFT made this huge and deep rant about the music industry. But the funniest thing is what comes after this. So below all of this nonsense, it says, Years later, Taylor elaborated on the origins of this song, saying that he watched so much European music television because he was suffering from food poisoning in Sweden and was unable to move and change the channel from MTV Europe. So now he's gonna act like the victim and pretend like he had no choice but to watch it. I really find it hard to believe you could not move at all to just freaking take a remote and press one button. The fact that he had to elaborate on it makes it feel very inauthentic. From the original quote, I was sitting in a hotel room watching a music video channel. Years later, oh, it's because I had food poisoning, then I couldn't change the channel. Like, if it was really that serious, wouldn't you have brought it up first? Or is it for dramatic effect or something? But the thought of the big old Cory MFT from mother effing Slipknot lost to food poisoning and couldn't change the channel is, like, kind of weak, to be honest. So in the information about the music video, it said, oh, there's a cameo by Poison guitarist CC DeVille. Poison? Hmm, let's Google that band. 
Poison is an American glam metal band. Wait a minute. Glam metal, also known as hair metal or pop metal, is a subgenre of heavy metal that features pop influence hooks and guitar riffs. That's like saying, oh, I hate Ed Sheeran, and then calling up Ed Sheeran and saying, hey, you wanna make a cameo? So the whole music video, the concept is just basically, oh, everyone's wood. And then, oh, instead of Hollywood, oh, we have Hollowood. Yes, so smart, man. If you hate the industry so much, why did you have a radio edit version of this song? If you hate the industry so much, why did you make a music video to promote this song? If you hate the music industry and pop music so much, why does the chorus repeat seven times? The chorus in my songs don't even repeat more than two times. Even the bridge is so repetitive and lazy. And it's the stars, the stars that shine for you, and it's the stars, the stars that lie to you, yeah, yeah, it's the stars that shine for you, it's the stars that lie to you, yeah, yeah. You say you hate pop music, everything is plastic and all the same. And to rebel against that, you write a freaking pop song? Wouldn't you want to write something that's miles ahead of pop music to show you can actually write something intelligent? The fact that the bridge is so lazy, the chorus repeats seven times. Honestly, it makes me think he's full of shit. You basically wrote a pop song, my guy, and you're rebelling against nothing. The breakdown and build-up is still the chorus. The lazy, repetitive bridge is also the outro. This song is long and repetitive enough already. We don't need more. So yeah, the stupidity of this song, ugh. Obviously, when I first heard it, I liked it, and it was somewhat deep. Am I going to let this lackluster background story ruin this song for me? Nah, it was kind of ruined anyway already, because it's very uninteresting. It's one of those songs you hear once and you never need to hear again. The melody is good, the verse is interesting, after that the chorus is just overkill. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, and like and subscribe.